In automation, we have a concept called data driving where we can run tests with multiple sets of data. The data can be inside of automation tool or you can take data from externally, like from Excel sheets or from DB, from anywhere. But when it comes to UFT, to understand the concept of data driving, first you need to understand the concept of actions. There are two sheets by default will be created. How many actions are there? Those many action sheets will be created. And these global sheets represent test. So then what is the meaning of that? How this thing is going to work and what is an action? An action is a reusable component. You can create an action or you can create a test with multiple actions and you can call these actions from other tests. So you can use them like functions where we can create a test flow or execution flow, anything. Or if we wanted to reuse something, yes, we can create an action and reuse or we can directly create actions and execute. Both are possible. So these are just logical components which can be executed individually or you can call from other tests. When it comes to UFT actions here, by default, when you create a test, it is creating action one and action one data table both. And global data table represents test. And I'll tell you how the data will control the action execution center. The first thing, what, how, how UFT is uh, giving suggestion to create the tests. Okay, let us see that first. I've opened an application, clicked on record button. Now we are in action one. The moment you click on action one, uh, uh, record, we are in action one. So let's say in action one, I wanted to create it like a login kind of functionality. Yes, I will do that. John HP and clicking the OK button. So this is going to be my action one. Now here, what I have to do is I need to create a new action by specifying call to new action. Now you can create, okay, this action name is going to be like a book flight. Clicking on okay, it is going to create another action. Now, I will start creating booking. You can select whatever you want. Find flights, select something, select flight, give a passenger name, order. So like this, you can able to do. Again, if you wanted to add one more action, yes, you can do that. So either you can create actions, uh, create a single action uh, test, or you can create multi-action test. You can even rename it. Rename, I'll say that this is going to be login. And you can create your own actions as well, saying that, you know, I wanted to open application, uh, close application, even those things also accepted. Here itself, I'll specify open application in login itself. Yes, you can even specify that. So I wanted to open application here. And I will use invoke application. Specify the part of it. So this will log in and book flight. And after that, if I wanted to close the application, yes, that I can still do that. And I will go for, you know, uh, uh, one more action, close application, and I'll do that. So let us see that. So I will create a new action by right clicking on this and then add call to new action. That means you can create an action while recording or while, uh, you know, or even after completion of development, you can do that. So here I am clicking on record and 
I'll go to application and then close it. That's it completed. Stop. So now I have three actions. So you can see the order here. The order is not good. And I will create the cut name here. Book flight like this. Happy. The order is not good. What is it talking here? How to specify correct order here? So first one is book flight, second one is closed, third one is login. So you don't need to worry about this order. This order is just shown in alphabet. But otherwise, you can go to test flow to actually see the order. I'm going to test flow. So this is my order. So first one is login, book flight, close. Let us test it. The moment I execute, I should open the application and log in and then book the flight and then closes. This is what you can do. Now you have one more. As I told you, we have the data now. How many rows are there in global data table? Let's say it can be any data. So I've given, you know, some data, data one, data two, something like this. So by default, how many rows are there in global sheet those many times the test is going to execute. Test means it's going to execute the complete actions like, you know, login, book, flight, close, it's going to execute. So how many rows of data we have in global sheet? The test is going to execute those many number of times. Let's see that. I'm clicking on one button. And I've given two rows of data. And the test should execute for two times. This is first time. Again, it started executing. And this is going to be second time. So how many rows of data we have given? Those many times the test is going to execute. Those many times the test is going to execute. So this is for row one, right? And this is for row two. You can see that test iteration. You can control this test iteration from file settings. Where is that? Oh, I have to select a test. I should be in test, right? Now you can see file settings run under this you can change it can run from data one to can run run on all data rows you can you can change it here here what you have to remember is the default setting is run on all data rows for test so if there is some data in global then the test will execute for each and every row irrespective of whether you read data or not that doesn't matter now so do you want to ro execute login for multiple times, book flight for multiple times, close for multiple times? So as per the scenario, let's say I wanted to log in once and then book twice and then close the application. So this, this works, isn't it? So in such case, I'm going to give two rows of data in book flight. So let's assume that, you know, order data one. And if you observe, I don't have any data reading in my test, that means in, 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 in my action. No, I'm not doing any data reading. I'm just filling the data. That's it, because this can be anything, some junk data. So if I use two rows of data, if I use two rows of data, this, this particular test, uh, sorry, action should execute for two times. Global sheet is going to control the test iteration action sheet is going to control the action iterations now let's execute it whether it executes twice that means only the book flight should execute for twice for each test iteration for each test iteration means first time it is going to execute the test second time uh, test and while executing for the first time it should execute uh, book flight for twice no it's not doing that why the default execution for action is one time 
So let us see that where do we set that configuration. To set this configuration, we must go to to set this configuration, we must go to actions uh, uh, in test flow. You can find that in test flow. You can find that right click and action call properties to control action iterations. We will go for action call properties. And if you observe, it is by default run on only one iteration. So when you select run on all data rows, then it will start executing on all row data rows. So now for book flight, I've selected run on all data rows. Because of that, we have some data here and it is going to execute for two times. That means, sorry, uh, book flight, it is going to execute for two times. So let us see this, whether it is going to execute two times for each test iteration. So that means the total test is going to execute for twice. And every time it executes the test, book flight executes twice. Let's see that. So first it executes login and then book for flight for twice, close application. Again, login, book flight for twice, close application. So that means total two times. So now what happened? Oh, what we missed here, again, we have to click on new search at the end. We did not. Because of that, it is going to fail. The reason is it's going to fail. Now it's see, it's failed. What we have to do? Let's record clicking on new search at the end so that it can execute. That means we must make sure that we are at the beginning before we uh, beginning position before we start execution. So we wanted to data drive this one. And for that, what we have to do here we need to make sure we are at beginning place by clicking on new search. Now new search has been created, clicked. So after placing the order, again, it's going to click on new search. Perfect. So now let's see, I've saved this one and observe now. That starts from the beginning. The moon, when you click on run button, it is by default going to execute test from the beginning. So I started doing that. And then again, the second iteration. It works. Open the application again. Again, click the new sets, second order. Yes, what happened now? So it executed test. And every time it executed test. Uh, it's executing the action for twice. Let us check it. So iteration row one. So in this login book flight, in book flight, you can see that action iteration one, action iteration two, right? And then close application. Again, the same thing, iteration two, login, book flight, and the next one, close application. So this is how the iterations that the data table controls the iterations of an action and test so we have test settings that are global settings and action call settings which controls iterations so now what we have to do we need to read data from these sheets so that every time it executes it takes the data from that particular excel sheet 